In Windchill, you can use part configurations in order to track the as-built configurations of your different products. And typically, this is used to manage the serialized components. In other words, you will create these things called part instances, which will list the serial numbers or the lot numbers of the different components that go into that as-built configuration. When you're doing this, I recommend that you do it for different products that are going to be produced in limited quantities only. For example, here I have an experimental battle tank. We're only going to build a few prototypes of this one. But if we we're going to go into production, I would probably want to use an enterprise resource planning package in order to do that kind of tracking for large numbers. Let's take a look at how to do it. So let's jump over from Creo Parametric into a standalone web browser. Here I am on the object information page for the WT part or the enterprise part for that CAD model that I just had open. Let's go to the structure tab. And here I'm looking at a custom table view in which I've added a column for the trace code for the different components in that tank. And you'll notice right now these are set to untraced because the original WT parts that were used in this CAD model had their default trace code set to untraced at the time in which I checked in the assembly. If you want to change the trace code, well, one easy way is to right click on it and then you can choose edit and then edit common attributes and this will bring up a dialog box where you can change it. So for this particular one, right now it is still set to untraced. I will go to the drop down list and maybe I'm going to use serial number for this one. But here's the thing when I click OK, even though I've changed the default trace code for that particular object in this particular iteration of my battle tank. Well, everything is still listed as untraced. So I'm going to go about changing the trace codes for these different objects in this WT part. And I can do that by clicking in the cell and then going to the drop down list. And for this one, maybe I want this one, this one by lot and serial number and this one as well. And I'm going to go about changing the trace codes for a bunch of these different objects. Okay, so I have finished changing the trace codes. I even changed the trace codes for a few of the different subassemblies. So let's right click on these and then check them in. And I'll just click the OK button. And let's do that for the other different objects as well. As well as the top level here. And so now we've got the trace codes updated. The next thing that I'm going to do is release this. If I go to the details tab, we can see that this is checked in. If we take a look at the state right now, it is in work. I want it to be released. I think that if I'm going to serialize this, that means it's going to go to manufacturing. So I'm going to release it. This is not required in order to be able to create a part configuration but I am going to do that. And so here we have the object. Let's use the checkbox in order to grab it. And I'm going to grab all the related CAD documents. Let me go to all of the dependents and let me select all of them as well and grab their CAD documents. All right, so here I have all these different objects. Let's select all. And for the target state, let's choose released. And then I will click the OK button. And I'm using the set state functionality because I am the only person in my windchill instance. You would probably do this with some kind of promotion request or even a change notice. So now we have our tank in the release state. In order to create my new configuration, I'll go to the actions drop down menu. And then here we have new. And in the list, we can create a new part configuration. This will open up a dialog box and we're going to give a name to the part configuration. I'm going to call this released a 
prototype series one. And right now I'm going to populate it using the basic option. And I'll show you the difference between basic and full. Here you can write in a description, but let's click the OK button. And so then it takes me to the part configuration for this particular one that I just made. And you can see all the different objects listed in here. And it only has the objects for which a trace code was defined. Let's go back to the previous object. And I'll create another part configuration. And before I do that, I'm going to go to a custom tab that I created in here. You can do that by clicking on the plus sign to make the tab. Then you can right click and rename it. And I have as one of my tables of information the different part configurations. So here you can see the one that I just created. Let's make another one. Let's go to Actions New and then New Part Configuration. Let me move this over a little bit. And I'm going to call this released, let's spell correctly, released a prototype series two. And instead of using basic, I'm going to use full and then click the OK button. And now when we take a look at the structure, we can see that we have even the objects that don't have different trace codes other than untrace. So we're seeing the entire product structure in here for managing this particular configuration. So let's go back to our object information page for the top level assembly. And now you can see the two different part configurations here. And then the next step after you create the part configurations is to create individual part instances. And in those different instances, that's where you can track the serial numbers and lot numbers for all of the different objects that have a trace code other than untraced. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.